Hello everybody and welcome back to the Texas Podcast. I am your host Gabe and today we will be talking about the Army of the Republic of Texas. The Texas Army, officially the Army of the Republic of Texas, was the land warfare branch of the Texas military forces during the Republic of Texas. It descended from the Texian Army which was established in October 1835 to fight for independence from the Centralist Republic of Mexico in the Texas Revolution. The Texas Army was provisionally formed from the consultation in November 1835, however it did not replace the Texan Army until after the Battle of San Jacinto. The Texas Army, Texas Navy, and Texas Militia were officially established on September 5, 1836 and Article 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of Texas. The Texas Army and the Texas Navy were merged with the United States Armed Forces on February 19, 1846 after the Republic of Texas became the 28th state of America. The regular division of the Army of the Republic of Texas was officially established on December 12, 1835. The original army evolved out of wartime Texan army during the hostilities of the Texas Revolution and came into its own. Any man who enlisted in the regular division would receive $24 in cash, the rights to 800 acres of land, and instant Texan citizenship. Those who joined the Volunteer Auxiliary Corps would receive 640 acres of land if they served two years while those who served one year would receive 320 acres. A month later, the establishment of a legion of cavalry would be authorized. The commander of the regular forces, Sam Houston, called for 5,000 men to enlist in the regular army, but had difficulty convincing men to join. Many of their arrivals from the United States did not want to be under more strict military control and instead informally joined the volunteer units that had gathered in other parts of Texas. These volunteer soldiers were in many cases more impassioned than the Texan settlers. Although the provisional Texas government was still debating whether the troops were fighting for independence or for separate statehood, on December 20th, 1835, the Texan garrison at Goliad voted unanimously to issue issue a proclamation of independence stating that the former province and department of Texas is and of right ought to be free, sovereign, and independent state. The provisional government had originally placed Houston in charge of the regular forces. But in December, the council gave secret orders to James Fannin and Frank W. Johnson and Dr. James Grant to prepare forces to invade Mexico. Houston was then ordered to travel to East Texas to broker a treaty that would allow the Cherokee to remain neutral in the conflict. Johnson and Grant gathered 300 and 400 men garrisoned in the Bayhar and left to prepare for the invasion. The government was woefully short of funds. On January 6, 1836, Colonel James C. Neal, commander of the remaining 100 troops in Behar, wrote to the council, There has ever been a dollar here, I have no knowledge of it. The clothing sent here by the aid and patriotic exertions of the honorable council was taken from us by arbitrary measures of Johnson and Grant, taken from men who endured all the hardships of winter and who were not even sufficiently clad for summer, many of them having one blanket and one shirt and what was intended for them given away to some men of whom had not been in the army more than four days and many not exceeding two weeks. For the next several months, it was unclear who was in charge of the Texian army, Fannin, Johnson, Grant, or Houston. On January 10th, Johnson issued a call to form a Federal Volunteer Army of Texas, which would march on Matamoros during the Matamoros Expedition. The first regular army was officially created and organized by the consultation in 1835 and was largely based on that of the United States Army. The consultation called for the most senior officers known as the commander-in-chief with the rank of major general to command the regular army and the volunteers with the power to appoint one adjutant general, one quartermaster general, one paymaster general, one surgeon general, and four aide-de-camps. Major General Sam Houston was elected as the inaugural commander-in-chief by representatives of the consultation in 1835 on November 12, 1835. Additionally, many of the officers were elected directly by the members of the consultation. Unit structure of the regular army called for two regiments, an infantry regiment and an artillery regiment, which each consisted of two battalions, which had five companies each. A separate corps of rangers as a battalion was set up to have three companies. Initially, the army did not include a cavalry when established in November 1835, but in December it was added and known as the Legion of Cavalry. The Legion of Cavalry was composed of two squadrons that were made of three companies each. In addition to the regular army and volunteer militia known as the Army of the People, a volunteer auxiliary corps was established to act as a military reserve force. Although much of the army remained the same on paper due to the ratification of the Constitution of the Republic of Texas in in September 1836, 
the organizational structure of the army was modified. The commander-in-chief of the army became the president of the Republic of Texas, but his command authority could not be exercised without the authority of the Congress of the Republic of Texas. The rank structure in the Army of the Republic of Texas was largely based off that of the United States Army. The commissioned officer ranks went from second lieutenant to first lieutenant, captain, major, lieutenant colonel, colonel, brigadier general, and then major general. The enlisted personnel went from private to lance corporal, corporal, sergeant, first sergeant, and staff sergeant. Until September 1836, the commanding officer of the Army was known as the commander-in-chief. Following the ratification of the Constitution of 1836, the title was assumed by the President of the Republic of Texas. The Republic of Texas had a total of four commanders-in-chief, starting with Sam Houston, Thomas Jefferson Rusk, and Mirabubi Lamar, and Anson Jones. Sam Houston was commander-in-chief in 1835-1836, and 1841-1844. Thomas Jefferson Rusk was commander-in-chief in 1836. Mirabubi Lamar was commander-in-chief in 1838-1841. Anson Jones was 1844-1846. The Secretary of War and Marine had six Secretaries of War. Thomas Jefferson Rusk in 1836, William S. Fisher in 1836 through 1837, George Washington Hockley 1841 through 1842, George Washington Hill 1842 through 1844, Morgan C. Hamilton 1844 through William Gordon Cook 1844 through 1846. The commanding officer of the Army of the Republic of Texas was three. Major General Thomas Jefferson Rusk in 1836, Brigadier General Felix Houston in 1836, and Brigadier General Albert Sidney Johnson in 1836-1840. Not much is known about the Army of the Republic of Texas from its time starting on the 5th of September 1836 through the 19th of February 1846. Its, of course, country was the Republic of Texas, and its allegiance was to the Constitution of the Republic of Texas. Its type was the Army, and its role was the Land Warfare Branch. The size of the Republic of the Texas Army only reached to about 3,600 troops. That is all for the Army of the Republic of Texas. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one.